down here. All right, everyone, welcome. It's Frank Klesowitz of Viral Marketing. Thanks for tuning in. I got Rachel, uh, Rachel Richards here in Phoenix as our guest today. Uh, how long have you been selling real estate, Rachel? Uh, 17 years. 17 years. Yep. And you've probably been through every coaching program and <laughs> every gimmick, everyone in Phoenix trying to sell you something to uh, help you grow your business. And you became a client of ours about a year and a half ago. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. How'd you first hear, how'd you first hear about viral? Um, you know, I'd seen videos throughout the years and um, I was hesitant to, to actually um, film videos and it wasn't something that I embraced right away. Um, but I had a very renewed focus in our database and our past client business. And so I was spending a lot of time and effort contacting each client, even our buyer's agents, uh, when they get a new escrow, I'm spending time calling them in the beginning, a couple touches throughout to establish that relationship. Um, so it was just getting to be so much to call that entire database. We've been in business a long time. Um, we usually sell around 250 to 300 units a year. So it was a lot for me personally. So I decided to add viral um, so that I, I figured it would be the next best thing to making a personal phone call and just to have that um, that consistent personal touch. I just, it couldn't hurt. So, and I'd actually had a lot of uh, other people that work with you that I admire a lot. Um, so that's why we reached out. Cool. Well, let's just get right into it. You've, your entire career, you've been very heavy, dedicated on cold calling, phone prospecting, door knocking. Door knocking um, in the early days. Uh, that was probably two to three years. Just a little background. My mom was a real estate agent. So I grew up the farming was like the big deal back then. Southern California, they did all the pumpkins and all the, you know, old fashioned types of things. So I grew up passing those things out with my mom. So when I got into real estate, that was kind of a, you know, she literally drove me to a neighborhood with nothing in my hands and said, you know, get out, try this neighborhood. And I still have clients from that day that I first went out and door knocked. But as I, uh, my career developed, you can't, you can only push that so far. And plus when I had children, you just can't door knock all day. So I started phone prospecting. Got it. Kind of the fundamental of our, of our brokerage. That's how you, you run your business is you're very focused on there. And then the, the title of the interview today is you had some aha of like, man, I really need to work my past clients in my sphere. Yes. And all these people sitting on my list. And I want to talk today about what that uh, and the shift you have to make when you're such a hardcore, dedicated, cold caller, outbound, cold stranger approach to like, oh my gosh, now I got to make videos and like do client events. <laughs> you know, all these things that naturally, probably with our natural personalities or ourselves is not the most uh, natural thing to do, right? Yeah. So um, my first question is, Tell me about the point of your business where you realized you got to get serious about work in your database. Um, I had that point what triggered it. So I had some changes in my business that really forced me. I knew all along that I, so I want you to know that we did a lot of um, mailing, emailing. It wasn't that we ignored the database. I just didn't personally enjoy calling the database as much as I should. Um, I, I just avoided the phone calls. I thought they'd be long, length, lengthy calls. And so it wasn't always my favorite type of prospecting. Um, but we just had some changes in our business where I realized um, that I had to really nurture that more. And it took me a long time to realize that it is actually a lot easier. Um, the calls don't have to be lengthy and it just took a lot of convincing for me. I know that's unusual. Most people love calling their database before a cold calling, um, but it just, it was really important this past year that we um, just renewed our focus. We had some changes in our business that forced me to do that. And it was incredible, the shift. So this past year, I've really backed off on calling expireds and FISBOs and most of our business is from the database. So when we prospect, we add those people into some type of campaign, whether it be, we call it a neighbor's know best or an investor network. So those people are also getting the videos and that with past clients forms the, a pretty huge database that we're calling and nurturing all of those people. So it's just a different, I just pivoted and they're warmer phone calls, they know who we are. So we take the, those calls pretty seriously after they open the viral emails and have like a, a very good system. 
to pro to to handle those calls. I want to get into that because okay. you actually when when somebody not now but we will later in the interview when somebody opens an email or clicks a link, okay, uh, those people are tagged in your system, and you prioritize phone calls of those individuals. Mm -hmm. And also allows you to see your closings, who's actually engaging with your stuff. So you know if there's any ROI in the first place with what you're doing with us. Yes. Right. Yep. But um, but before that, okay. um, you decided you had to make a shift to work your database. Viral marketing and engaging us and hiring us is one of the things that you did. Can you share with our audience of like, okay, well, I'll even step back a bit. Uh, I think you said before the interview, um, very door knocking, phone prospecting. Then the allure of internet leads comes along and you probably yeah. make some money on that, right? Um, however, many of those companies went to a referral fee model, which I don't think you were a fan of. Is that correct? Well, not necessarily. We are we work very closely with some of those companies, Zillow, and so we still work with them. So I definitely have a background with prospecting, and that's our fundamental. At the same time, over the years, we have adopted marketing as well, internet marketing. So we do a significant amount of internet marketing as well. Um, what I realized was those chain these companies are changing constantly, and we just had no control of it. Yeah. Previously, we were paying for a product and, and marketing, and that can change at any given time. So one of my coaches said something to me that really, I think about it still every day. If I were to go on Shark Tank and sell my business, and if most of that business came from a third party company, you really don't have a very strong business. So that spoke to me. And so we have a very serious focus on uh, just self-generated, company-generated business, whatever that is, that we made it happen. So to make that more happen, you decided to go deeper into database. You put viral in place. Yes. But can you tell me some of the other things that you did as well to renew that focus on your database? So we actually, while we're prospecting or anyone that we speak with, if they do not need to sell or buy now, we put them into another system. And so those people are still work. So our database is, um, I think today I looked and it's 8,500 people. So that's all of our leads, that's everything. So all of them have the proper type of um, campaign that has some type of automated communication, but also a lot of phone calls and the viral uh, videos as well. Great. So you started seeing uh, an uptick in your business. Um, other than you know? the paid leads. So that's the difference. Other paid it's really leads. about the same. Yes. But what's really cool is that it's things that we are doing. It just gets back to where I started. We got really heavy on internet leads for a long time. And we still are. We still, I still believe in internet marketing and, and having those paid leads. You just can't avoid that in today's um, real estate. But what we're excited about is a lot of this business is coming from our own efforts. And you track it. So let's talk about this. Um, you shoot your videos with us, they go out to your list, but then we give you a report of all the people who open and click links. Yes. Tell me what happens. So we, this was tricky and it took us a little while and we didn't do this in the beginning. We probably implemented this maybe six months ago and it's viral is sort of a sub lead source. It's not where it initially came from most of the time anyways. A lot of times it was someone in a campaign or a past client. Um, something else I didn't say with the past clients that's important is we had a renewed focus from the escrow process, touching them through that until closing. So I think that made a big difference in our business too. We're getting a lot more referrals where we're touching them through the escrow versus just at close of escrow. So that's something I, that I didn't mention. But as far as that tagging system, so when that happens, we, we basically have a tag, we use Sisu, which is a tracking and reporting system. They have an option that you can have a sub lead source. So we're able to see how many people have actually clicked on. So anytime you send us those reports, we go through, we tag them, and then we know when they do list or sell or they list or buy with us that they have watched the video. So it will help us next year when we do it for the entire year to have a better idea of how much that's making a difference. That's great. How many agents do you have on your team? We have uh, 13 agents total, including staff. Do you too. have it? Do you have any ISAs around the phone all the time or so all the we did? Um, that's something this past year we had one ISA 
and I just promoted her to a listing agent. So that was not really successful for us, honestly. Um, what I've decided on that is I really like the, the agents to have some ownership and that they are, especially the buyer's agents on that first touch um, with some of the new systems out there with different companies where they're touching the lead and then the ISA gets the lead and then the agent finally gets the lead. It's just a lot of tossing around, lots of paths. So we find that uh, we've gone back to where we originally were. We have lead shifts where agents are required to be on for a certain period of time. They handle the first contact. We do a lot of PPC as well. And they make the first contact with that lead, hit it hard for you know, a period of time. And then it does go into an automated system like a workflow or a campaign. Got it. Um, how do you know your team's making their calls and following up? We are always working on that. So our team leader has a, a system where she's checking to make sure that all the notes are added. We're looking into adding something called um, like a call rail or a tracking system. But when you are using Mojo with Real Geeks, you can actually see it just automatically. But we find the buyer's agents, they struggle. They don't always like using that technology. Our listing team definitely uses that technology, but we do struggle. They, they need to tally it. Um, so we can improve in that area, absolutely. That's good, you're getting all your agents to call. Congratulations, that's a hard thing. <laughs> it's on, ongoing, probably my yeah. biggest challenge. So that's very frustrating to me. And finally this year, I did get some help in that area where um, an agent that's worked with me for seven years. She does our contract negotiating. I moved her into our team leader position to manage the buyer team because the buyer team is challenging. They're not necessarily sales minded. They're more service minded and they're a significant portion of our business. But I struggle um, sometimes relating to not, I don't understand why you can't make the calls or mark that the, the calls done and just using the system. So that was a big um, there was a big help moving, promoting her into that position. And I'm able to focus more on the listing team and the team as a whole, but not managing them, inspiring them, motivating the sales system, training on sales, but not necessarily managing them. You said earlier in the pre-interview, we export all your contacts. So we have your past clients, your sales influence. We also grabbed all the other emails that you've built over the years, uh, many from online leads. Uh, that aren't like, you know, trash or archives, yes. but also um, all the people you're talking to all day long, you're asking for their email address before you hang up the phone. So a couple questions here. Uh, first, do you, and again, you may not know this number, it's perfectly fine if you don't, but you do roughly know like how many people a week your entire team are talking to? Like you got to guess, um, like number of contacts a week throughout the whole team, just to give people some understanding of like, you guys are on the phone. <laughs> No question. I, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a challenge. The listing team is on the phone until our hours are eight until noon where we're prospecting. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the buyer team, it's a real challenge um, to see, you know, our goal. Well, the, go what's ahead. the goal? Give me, give me a number. We want Just... each agent to talk to 25 a day. This month we have a competition on how many conversations, who has the most conversations. Um, but again, the buyer team they're just not as sales minded. So it's yeah. a, it's a constant and anyone who says otherwise, I don't know what they're doing differently, but you have to stay on that all the time because they yeah. just want, they want to show homes. They enjoy the service and the process and serving people. So it can be a challenge, uh, but the ISA model didn't work for us. And I know it works for a lot of people, but we shifted where the agents are now talking to those leads. And I think it's better just to have more agents with less leads per agent to make sure that those are being handled properly for us. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, they're still talking to considerable people. So let's just say they, they, they hit 15 and you see you have 13 agents. Yes. Okay. So that's a hundred, even minimally, it's about 200 people a day. Your team are speaking with. If it's 15 contacts, they should be. <laughs> yep. They should be. Yeah. But on every single one of those contacts, your, your team has been trained and incentivized and led to ask for an email address to add to the database? So we, the buyer's agents, primarily their job is leads that have come into us. So um, whether it be internet or past client. So the listing team is making outbound calls. So we're contacting expireds, FISBOs, calling around listings. And how many listing people on your team do you have? Three. Okay. And they're, and they're probably doing so in yourself if you're hitting your 25. So that's 100 people a day. Yeah, we definitely would hit that on the listing team. So when we talk to anyone, let's say we had contacted a neighborhood and they say, I'm never selling. I'm staying here forever. 
we're never moving, Rachel. We would say, perfect, okay, that's fantastic. Mean? It's a great neighborhood. Why don't I go ahead and send you regular updates? We have a program in your neighborhood. Most of the residents are already receiving the reports. You're gonna love it. What's your email address? And then we add them in. So I look at it like we're hunting and then we're gathering. And I was just recently on a panel and uh, someone else added in farming, which it's true. That last piece is just the farming piece. And that is a portion of our calls during the day is calling those people. So any of those people we add into those campaigns, we call four times a year, regardless if they're interested in selling now and we just continue to nurture them. If we call someone and it's an investor and they own a rental property, we add them into a program where we call four times a year and we increase that cadence as we come up on the lease term um, expiring. And we do a lot of business. Uh, oh, wow. So you, that's smart. It is, and that's a huge portion of our business. So when so what, I mentioned- six, 60 days out before a lease expires, you're calling the, the, the landlord saying, yes, uh, and that's you really want to do this? You really want to do this again? Yes. So that's a huge portion of our business. Is, How do you know that? Are the most of the rentals in Phoenix on MLS? Um, we call for rent by owners. And then just a lot of people that you're calling that expired or they didn't, they weren't successful in selling um, they're, they're just leasing the properties. And as, right now our market's really hot, but in previous markets, they end up leasing the property just because they're frustrated and they couldn't sell it. Now we're in a really hot seller's market right now. So that's not as common, but in normal mm -hmm. markets, which if this isn't common, they end up, they're not landlords or investors by design. It's by default. They just decided to rent it because they're frustrated. So we love that kind of business and we love phone consultations, we call them, which is a virtual listing presentation. So we've developed some great systems to you know, list a lot of properties where we are doing that on the phone. And we've been doing that for years. That's just something now that's so common with COVID, but that's been a huge portion of our business for a lot of years. When did you make this shift um... So you go back to kind of more of the very basic traditional teachings of Mike Ferry. Uh -huh. Like if they're not ready to buy or sell like now, throw them out. And you made a shift where, yeah, there's an element, strong element to that. But one step further is like, you know, at least I'm going to ask for their email address and put them on my list. Yes. That's a big shift. And you started collecting all these emails, even though there might not be a phone call follow-up date. When did you make that shift to start collecting all that nurture information? I did that in the beginning. It just never felt comfortable to me. I figured, what the heck? I've already made the Why not, call. right? Yeah. And then also leaving messages. They don't recommend that you leave messages. So I believe in a lot of the fundamentals of Mike Ferry organization. Um, but I have made shifts that work better for us that um, I just believe, why not? I'm on the phone. I'm going to put them in a system. It's not that much more effort to go ahead and set that up. And that's really worked for us over the years. It's It's... If you just continue building it and feeding it and nurturing it, um, that's I I don't know why you wouldn't do that. There's with market reports through Real Geeks or whatever system, top producer, you got the market snapshot, whatever system you use, it's so easy to set up one of those reports. Just set it up, keep going, make the next call. So you you and your three listing agents are collectively speaking to about hundred people a day on the phone prospecting. Out of 100 people, how many people actually give you their email address to add to your viral plan? <laughs> oh, gosh, I don't know. I haven't really tracked that. But I do know if you say it very, very, just uh, I'm always training them that you have to just, if Frank, I know you're not interested in selling right now. No problem. It's a great neighborhood. Why don't I do this? Let me go ahead and send you our report. It comes out. Most of your neighbors are already receiving it. What's your email address? Just say it very casually. And usually they give it to you. Yeah, you've turned you turned yourself and your three listing agents into human opt-in forms. I mean, human websites getting email addresses. If you say it very casually and just caring, and if they do, their second objection handler for that is, you know what, Frank, you'll go ahead and take a look at the information. If you don't find it valuable, you can always unsubscribe. I think you're going to love it. Most of our, most of the neighbors already really enjoy the the reports. Good. So that's how you're building your database. Awesome phone calls, very uh, low expense. Um, next, you're nurturing it. So you've hired us to help you build a blog and you get on camera and you shoot two Q&A videos a month or two helpful videos a month. What do you find are the 
some of the best topics that you can recommend or things you maybe feel comfortable creating? What would you give, uh, what advice would you give to the audience on the kind of the process of shooting a video, picking a topic, getting it done? What's worked well for you this past year and a half? So I really like when I can do a local market statistics video, but it's so time consuming. So I found that like this last month I did, um, the difference between home maintenance and upgrades for homeowners. And then I also interviewed one of our agents to uh, give three strategies on how to get their offer accepted. Um, so if you can do something that doesn't take as much preparation, you're more likely to get it done. And I do want to compliment um, you and your emails, the emails that, the, that you prepare. If you do miss a video, you have the emails that are set up those get just as great a response. They're fantastic. Yeah. I've always joked at Viral, we can actually just ax all the videos and just send out the stuff to be great. Right. They're great. You know? Yeah, yeah we've, we've really had great success with those emails. So Thank we've you. even um, printed them and mailed them to our clients. So they're, they're great. Love it. Great. Yeah. Good. Thank you for doing that. Um, anything just, I mean, this is kind of a self-serving question, but it's just nice to hear. Is there anything specifically that stands out working with us that you enjoy? I, I think you guys have great customer service and honestly, it is a heck of a deal for $500 a month. 550, I, I but yes. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's really, yeah. you're going to go back and I'm sure other people have shared that, but I do think it's an incredible value Thank for you. $500 a month that we yeah. get the emails and that you edit the videos. Um, we are, I'm really excited. We're growing our brokerage right now. We're an independent brokerage. So I'm planning on taking your recruiting course. Oh, we're going to start recruiting in Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Independent so, brokerage. We oh, are yeah. already an independent brokerage right now. Did and you start that way. We are taking a class right now through Chris Waters and yeah. that CEO and I'm loving it. We're learning so He's much. very bright. It's just been fantastic. So we're really on a, on a big growth phase right now and excited about some of these, the services that you offer and some of the things we've learned with his um, course that we're taking. So lots of great things are happening. Yeah, if you guys have a chance, uh, go get the book, The Million Dollar yeah. Real Estate Team. We read it as a team and we are yeah. just um, like lightning speed going forward right now with our 30 day launch class and recruiting and we're really pumped up about it. It's been excellent. We love that book. Good. I'll well, start hearing on the radio and get your billboards around town. All those things Chris has done. <laughs> yep. You Good. never know. Yep. Good. So you shoot your videos, you're building your database. When um, people open the emails and they click the links, uh, do you have a subcategory, a sub lead category? That's kind of we cool. We do. So if you use- It's like, here's your to... main lead source. It came in this way, but yes. they've been hit these ways too. So you have to factor that in your ROI equation. It's like a supporter. So, um, and I'm sure as it grows over the years, it won't always be where people will subscribe to the video. Um, I'm really excited about, you know, just the recruiting course too. And the idea of being able to send videos that are valuable to agents and how to build yeah. your business. And the same- We're going to concept. position you as a coach. In it's the entire fantastic. Class. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but we do, we look at it like uh, support. So it was tricky to figure out how to track the success of viral or in these videos. And so it comes in, let's say it came in as a Zillow or realtor.com. And if we notice that they clicked, then we tag it that they clicked on viral and it stays there forever. So we do notice. And so I'm the one who's still making those phone calls because I'm really passionate about just making sure that it's all being handled correctly in the beginning and that we understand um, just what we're doing. So those, those tags will stay. And what we notice is there's some, there's some we call them frequent flyers. They, they click on it every month. <laughs> they just love the information. So I have to get kind of creative with them, you know, blending a text and email. Cause I know they're not selling. I just talked to them. They just love the yep. information, but I want to. At least you have that information click. right back in your CRM. Yes. Uh, is, is, are there, is a click open and click data from Emma, which is a service that we yes. use to send your emails yes. out going back into your CRM? It is. And then we're actually using it within CSU as the nice. subcategory. Great. Yes. CSU has an option where, and so then we, we got all that integration it. set up for you. Yep. Yeah. Great. So that took a little bit of time to get set yeah. up next year. We'll, it'll be a full year running. Um, but we're really excited again for um, just the results of it. And just last week, I'll share a success story. I called someone and he said, gosh, you know, I was just so frustrated, but I couldn't get the, the link to work. The technology was kind of an uh, older gentleman. And 
um, I said, that's, I'm so glad I called today. This is fantastic. Why don't we go ahead and schedule a time where we can prepare you a custom market analysis. Let's review the market together. And he said, I am leaving for North Carolina next week to find a home. And so we scheduled a listing appointment and, and it was just from calling. And he didn't even get the information. He wasn't able to figure it out for some reason. Maybe he had a computer issue or, yep. so that was a great success. Great, good. Yeah. Have you, um, one of the things with Chris Waters, have you thought about bringing other businesses into your videos or on your blog or having other businesses in your resource network participate in some of what you're doing and maybe help raise some money for your next expansion phases? Yeah, you know, um, I have uh, very strong partnerships right now with uh, our title company or some lenders and, um, but he has definitely has me thinking about more um, companies that we can definitely have part of that. What is he called? The brand ambassador program. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's absolutely something to think about right now. We're really focused on the training program, recruiting, making sure that's all dialed in, but that is absolutely something. I do have partners right now that contribute towards our marketing. Um, but we, that would be great to take it to the next level. Yeah. Okay. So we can do that here at Viral for you. We can help you include those people in your marketing. But that's what I wanted to cover is you um, start off very hardcore cold calling. Mm -hmm. Then you got into internet leads. Then you realize, man, that's, I could be held hostage by that if I'm not careful. And uh, you decide to really take your database seriously. And one of the things, in addition to many things, take your database seriously with good customer service throughout the escrow process, you just put a viral in place and you have it perfectly tracked, <laughs> which is great. You're calling and following up with the people that engage with your videos, which is a wonderful you know, warm source in your database to call. And also you and your three listing partners are speaking to over 100 homeowners in Phoenix a day. And they're obviously not interested in selling now, which most aren't, you're adding them to your list so they're getting nurtured. So when they do, when they are interested, you're positioned well and you're calling them. I mean, you're doing everything right. <laughs> Thank you. Everything right. Well, you're gonna hit 100, you're gonna hit 100 million in volume this year? I hope so, we're really close. Um, Pretty close. We've made a lot of mistakes. So it's definitely been a, a long journey and we still continue to learn and mess up and do things wrong and shift and fix it. And that's just part of the process. So. Um, it hasn't been easy. There are many changes in our business over the years, and um, but it's exciting. We are really, uh, it's just, it's a great journey to, to figure out what works, what doesn't. And as long as you just keep plugging away. I'm glad viral is in one of the categories of work. That's yeah, good. Thank really you. Great. Absolutely. It's been you know, very, um, it's great to see. I want to ask you one last question. They'll be done. And thank you so much sure. for your time. And if you're watching this and you have any referrals in Phoenix, Send over to Rachel. I'm sure she'll call them and make sure they, uh, you know, they got they close uh, they get closed. But um, what is like one mistake throughout this entire journey? We're like, man, I should have never gone down that path because it set me back so far and was just a complete waste of time and money. Well, I won't say it was a complete waste of time and money, but we got very very heavy into Zillow. Uh, paid marketing. It was extremely successful, but because the changes in their model, um, I started, it gets easy. You get these great systems. And so not keeping a pulse and uh, just true to what you know, you've got to uh, have that foundation. Um, that's what I would. I, yeah, I would, got real easy following up with those, not doing the cold calls every day and working the day. Yeah, database. we got really yeah. heavy into that. And we still work really closely with Zillow. So I don't want to yeah. uh, mislead you. We, we definitely do a lot of business. It's a different model, though. Um, and I just want to, moving forward, make sure that we have a massive focus on self generated business. So if I were to go on Shark Tank, you know, I can list all these sources that we made happen, we own it, no one's taking it from us. And um, that's really what gets me fired up. Rachel, thank you so much for your time. Sure, today. thank you. If you guys have any questions, um, go to the homepage, getviral.com. You can download a copy of the video marketing plan that Rachel's implemented. Um, you can also see a bunch of examples up on the website. And if you're interested too, of getting started with us, you can request a free strategy call on our website. My business partner, John, will talk to you about working together. There's also a 90 day money back guarantee. So I'm pretty confident we get you some business in 90 days from your list. If we can't, it's probably not gonna work for you. <laughs> so uh, it's totally no risk to get yourself on camera and to get some communications out. 
to see if there's something that works. And I'm pretty proud of that because there's not a lot of marketing out there where that will give you 90 days back if it doesn't work. And viral is one of those things that I'm pretty proud of to be able to offer that to you. So if you think about work with us, check it out. And uh, Rachel, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for having me.